Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and today we've got a nice little model, and I use the term little very ironically, from Grim Skull Miniatures. We have a new orc looted dread boss. So this is interesting. Um, I know I think we've seen some of the War Games exclusive Grim Skull stuff in the retail packaging before, but it's nice to see it very, you know, multi-language format, very presentable, very easy to pick up off of a, you know, shelf at a store on a peg. But I've yet to see these in the wild, but that would be really cool to see. Anyway, enough of that rambling. Let's actually take a look at the model. <clears throat> Here I was thinking I'm going to be able to, you know, get it out all nice and neat. That's a big base. That's like a 60 millimeter base. Just to give you guys a good idea. We've got a nice little detailed base topper. Again, a little being used, unfortunately, quite ironically. It does not take up the whole thing. And then we've got all the bits and stuff inside. Now this is a fun model because, yes, it is a looted dread boss in the sense that he is actually wearing bits of a dreadnought's shell as actual armor. This is going to be a fun one. Big honking orc backpack, naturally. What looks to amount to cinder blocks or something. Detail, as always, on these War Games exclusive figures is quite nice. But that's to be expected. Very little in the way of cleanup necessary, obviously. Just a little bit here and there on ends of parts. We have a bag of goodies in here. Let's see what we got. Obviously, we're going to need some feet. There's one of them, and the other. Again, there's like one of the only instances of some cleanup we're going to need. Now, these are different. You'll see one is flat, whereas the other is curved, so I'm assuming it's going to be stepping over some of the base debris. A set of wires that looks like it's going to plug in somewhere. I'm going to be careful about clipping those all the way. The arms. There's one, there's the other, a machine gun to go somewhere, some teeth with a skull, I think that goes in front of the head, another wire I just dropped, two sets of horns because it is an orc after all, and then finally we've got the head. Or what's left of it, at least. He's going to be a big orc. I'm trying to figure out if those two little mobs are supposed to stay attached. I'm going to guess yes, they are, because you can see here, they are going to kind of line up with the wires protruding from the armor itself. And I'm going to guess that the horns go there. Still no clue where that machine gun's going to go. I think it goes on one of the hands. But all in all, I'm going to guess you're going to be quite a large orc. Where's my regular basic grunt orc that is always hanging around here? I know you're here somewhere, my friend. Don't tell me you left me all alone. I think he did. Well then, I'm going to go search for that orc. I'm going to get this guy all put together, and we'll see just how he turns out and how impressive it is when you're wearing scrapped dreadnoughts as body armor. It's a tight. All right, I got our dread armor all put together, and I got to say, for the most part, everything went nice and smoothly. I did have a little bit of a tight squeeze trying to get the cables into the body. Now you'll notice that he is missing his bottom half. Never fear, I'm just keeping it that way for the time being, at least for ease of painting. It's going to make things a lot simpler. So you can see here where the connections are on the head. 
And for the most part, despite how pointy, spiky, and angular everything is, I feel like none of the parts really get in the way. So here are the only real difficult parts were just trying to get the right angles. I glued on the arms. The arms are a tight fit. When I tried to dry fit both of his, you know, flesh parts, uh, it was really tough trying to pop them out. So they'll fit. Uh, you might want to just be careful about that. And then after that, we glued on the gauntlets of the dread. And then trying to fit the wires in, you do want to make sure this is nice and clean and flush. So everything, once I got that right, it just slipped right in. There's also an interesting little connection here. These wires that are running under his arm actually attach to the backpack when that was a separate piece that's already glued, not glued, but molded onto the torso. So yeah, uh, other than that, everything just kind of fell into place nice and simply. I'm not the biggest fan of the face. It's very skull-like. It's not doing a whole lot for me. Everything else, I'm really digging though. Uh, I wish there was an extra gunnan over on his right hand, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, so let's take a look at the base. This thing, like I said, is absolutely massive. Too massive to the point that I think it's a little bit silly because once you've got his scenic base topper on there, there's just a lot of extra room. And when all is said and done, as you can see, it's way too zoomed in. There's a lot of empty space, and I get the idea is that especially if you're going to use him like as a Gazgul type proxy, uh, you do want to make sure he's on the right size base. Me, I think that works, it totally works, but I would much prefer using him like if you wanted to roll him as like a mega knob or something. Boom, check that out, perfect on a 50 millimeter base, just perfect. I do have him green stuffed on there. That was the other big challenge, was actually trying to figure out how to get those legs adjusted. So you can see there's big wads of uh, blue tack under there. The left leg at least has some indentations as to where his feet are supposed to go, but there really wasn't much on the right foot. So I just tried to eyeball it what was going to sit the most flush, obviously without the blue tack on there, and then we went ahead and glued it together. So not too complex really not that difficult just trying to figure it out and at least i can forewarn you all about what to expect and then why don't we grab a couple other models just to give you guys a good idea size wise i think it really works i couldn't find my usual orc i don't know what happened to him so maybe he's on vacation since that's what we're all doing i grabbed another one with his rear end just jutting out look at him twerking there mm -hmm. yeah uh, so definitely we've got some size issues there uh, but he's going to look that much more impressive. I mean, obviously, if he's wearing Dreadnought armor, he should be big. Grabbing a few other bigger models. I think he's going to fit right in line with the Artel stuff. Uh, maybe not looks necessarily, but size, dimensions, and badassness, I guess, uh, definitely is in the right place. Uh, I've seen plenty of people use the big Iron Jaws boss as something similar to this guy i think that would totally work as well if you wanted to go that route um i mean if you just clip off the guns and you want to paint them up a little bit more simplistically sure why not i mean yeah it's supposed to be a dreadnought but you know it is what it is and now i see the camera going crazy again stop it grabbing a beast boy let's see do we have any other orcs i have another Grim Skull, greater good guy. The wandering uh, monk salesman guy. Fun model. I need to go paint some more of these. I used to have so many, and then I had an offer that I couldn't refuse. And every time I get those offers, I can't refuse from people liking this stuff. Hey, it helps finance the channel. Uh, <laughs> coming out of everybody else's pockets instead of mine, I'm all for it. So I'll have to get myself some more of those. Grabbing a good old Rustic Dead Zone Marauder. And you guys, I would love to see some plastic Marauders. And an actual Iron Jaws. Just to get some good ideas of what to expect. So I think in terms of just a fun model, uh, Grim Skull, War Games exclusive, tend to make really nice, well-sculpted 
well detailed well built models and if you haven't had a chance to check any of their stuff out oh my god i wholeheartedly recommend you do we've got tons of videos of their stuff already on this channel so you know take a look at those as well and like we said the link is going to be down there at the bottom of the description above the comments might as well grab some marines while we're at it too right so yeah, other than the size of the base, I mean, if they wanted to make him a little bit bigger, I guess, but I think he works great the way he is. I just wouldn't necessarily put him on the bigger base. I'm going to probably go with the 50. That's just me. But I think he would work both ways absolutely well. And I will leave it at that. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.